Hi, my name is Mitra Manesh. I'm a servant. I serve through teaching, coaching, consulting, or any other way that I can find to share what I know with those who want to know. And this Lights On podcast is one of those ways. It was created with consciousness and mindful living in heart. So join us as we travel through many roads of learning and transformation together. And if you enjoy our podcast, please give us feedback by rating us five star and share us with others if you think they may benefit from it. On behalf of my team, I thank you for your presence. This episode is about giving thanks. I mean, those heartfelt, real thanks, not the ones that we just say thank you. And uh, as short as the episode as this one is, we get into a few interesting topics such as uh, venting versus complaining, balance of problems and solutions, and balance of attention to problems and solutions. And also, um, I speak about what question and what stage we can be in when we're unable to uh, actually give thanks, heartfelt thanks. It's an interesting one. I hope that you enjoy it. And let's take a listen together. So what is this attraction to lack of expression of thank you? Uh, the first thing that comes to my awareness is that when we are in our mind, that the mind space, which we are all addicted to, by the way, um, we talk about addiction in the sense of drugs and alcohol, but in my view, the most common global addiction is addiction to thinking, and I really mean negative thinking. So when we are in that space, what are we thinking about? Just think about that. When I'm in my mind, and don't forget, my mind is for my survival. So when I am in my mind space, I'm asking the question or answering the question of what is wrong. In that space, it's very hard to be thankful because my mind is basically navigating the room, navigating the person or persons that are there or even the memories of them to find out what was wrong. How can I be thankful in that space? I'm looking and searching and finding things that I can be complaining about and be sad about or judgmental about. So in that space, these two contrary and very opposite energies of being thankful and looking for trouble and problems cannot coexist. That's why thank you is not in its essence part of us. But you may argue with me and say, no, people always are polite <laughs> and say thank you. And I say, it is not what we say that is important. It is what we feel. I can say a thank you that is worse than any swear word that I can use. I cannot even say thank you and just look at you with gratitude and you will feel it. So this emphasis on words only, and that's been a major problem in our lives, especially recently, because we've had access to polite words, we've had access to spiritual words and so-called enlightenment and we feel that access to them or even using them is sufficient. And I want to take this thank you um, practice to a deeper place, if I may, today for you and with you. And that is to really take it to a place that we feel the thank you and then we communicate it. We can only do that when we are in a space that it's not a fear-based space. We can only do that when I am not at the mercy of my mind and I am allowing other things to be in my awareness. So let me give you a practice for that. The mind is always asking what is wrong. And for us to bring balance to that, and as, as you see, I'm not saying that we need to let that go. I'm saying to bring balance to that 
I need to ask the question of, of what is right? What is right with this moment? What is right with my life? What is right with me? What is right with you? And that question allows us to go to a place of balance. By no means, I want you to let go of your thinking and rational mind. Otherwise, if you do that, you will not survive well. But if you stay there too long, you will not thrive well or thrive at all. So my invitation to you is to introduce this new statement and new question to your mind and ask what is right with fill in the blank and allow that natural thankfulness to come to you. I recall that um, when I was traveling with my teacher, he traveled around uh, Asia. Of course, traveling, things can go wrong and things did go wrong. And every time I sat to discuss, like, this is, has happened and they forgot this and they lost that and they don't have this, he would say, mm, mm. and where is the gift? And I was thinking, gift? I don't know the gift. He said, well, there is a gift. Look for the gift. Go and find the gift. And I think this was his way of, oof, I had a bit of emotion for him. It was his way of uh, inviting me to go to a place that says there's also always something right, even in the midst of when things are wrong. So let me go to the happy people. Happy people are balanced people. By happy people, I'm not referring to people who put a happy face on everything and deny the facts of life. That also brings suffering. But I'm talking about people who really pay deep attention to both the challenges of life and address them, but they address them from a place of knowing that there's also many things right in their life in that moment. When we see each other after a while, and just imagine, say I have a pain or I had a, an operation, let's even go deeper. So you say, Mitra, how are you? What is the first thing I am likely to say? I probably say, oh, just had an operation, a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty. Okay, if I had an operation, say, in my hand, that's one piece of many, many, many pieces in my body. I never report to you that, you know, my he head doesn't hurt. My feet move really smoothly. And by the way, I have a beautiful digestive system. I won't ever report on that, but I will focus on one piece part of my body. Is there anything wrong with that? No. We want to have a venting mechanism in our lives. Believe me, I create venting mechanism for my students, for my clients, for my loved ones, for myself because venting is extremely healthy. But there is a difference between venting and complaining, and that is that venting has a different agenda. I'm telling you my troubles. I'm thinking about my troubles with an intention of leaving them and moving to the solution. But complaining state, and it's just a matter of words. I mean, I, I chose these two words to give them different meanings. Um, I'm not picky about the words, but the concepts are important. You need to have an agenda for what you're talking about when it's a negative and when it focuses on the problem. And if the agenda is to, as they say, get it out of my system so that I can move forward towards the solution, that's great. But if I have no awareness of why I'm saying what I'm saying, I may stay there for a long time, longer than helpful and healthy. And sometimes I've seen people staying there for almost a lifetime. That's what trauma is called. Uh, trauma means. So am I saying that you should just, just move forward? No, I'm saying we need to practice to bring a balanced attention to both the problem and the solution at any given time. And that is what the secret of happy people is the happy people that have been studied, the happy people that I personally have worked with, 
they have a balanced attention to the problem. In fact, very realistic attention to the problem and also an attention to the solution and what's working. The reason we need to go to the space of what's working in my life is that I cannot find a solution in the belly of the problem. When I'm staying there, as Einstein said, we can never solve a problem at the level that it was created on. I think he was referring to the consciousness that allows us to move higher, rise above the problem so that we can think about and contemplate on the solution. Hope this episode answered the question or two for you or provoked and inspired questions in you. I'm so grateful you showed up and listened up. Until the next time, be well and stay curious.